The suspect described in a manifesto how he came to embrace racism through online forums. Dean Reynolds spoke with someone who made that same descent into darkness, but came out of it. Confederate flag. Didn't even know that right that was there. Open a certain box in Christian Picciolini's home. There is a Nazi flag. This and the first things to pop out are painful there. reminders of his past, yeah. artifacts of his days as a race-baiting skinhead. You were a skinhead for how many years? I was a neo-Nazi skinhead from 1987 until 1995, roughly from the time I was 14 years old until I was 21. He says he and alleged Charleston shooter Dylan Roof might once have been kindred spirits. Would you have applauded Dylan Roof? I would have. I would have thought that this guy had the courage to speak for the rest of us and to do something. Yeah. Picciolini grew up the son of immigrants in a blue collar suburb of Chicago. I was standing here smoking a joint and the guy walked up to me and he just said, don't you know that that's what the communists and the Jews want you to do to keep you docile? And I was like infatuated by this power. He had a shaved head and boots and thin suspenders on and I'd never seen anything like it. From that moment on, I wanted to be like that guy. He liked the message and loved the music. That's Picciolini leading his old band, Final Solution. The music spoke of unemployment and it spoke of, of uh, black on white crime. When I was told that the white race was being attacked from all sides and that minorities were to blame for all the problems that I was having, I bought in. Back then, recruitment was one kid at a time, but these days the radical fringe can easily work its way into anyone's home computer. It's much easier because there's a layer of anonymity for people, so you can say almost anything you want. Now, watching events unfold in Charleston, Picciolini hears echoes in the sentiments of Dylan Roof. He could have literally torn pages out of my book and posted it online. The rhetoric is the same. Not everybody becomes a Dylan Roof, uh, but I think that there are thousands of people like him across our country that eventually could be radicalized enough to, to cause as much damage as he did. These days, Christian Picciolini tries to help others leave the skinhead movement just like he did. And Scott, he's co-founded a nonprofit organization called Life After Hate. Important insight tonight. Dean, thank you very much.